Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com, YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to make a video which might be the start of making videos, which unlike a lot of people when they make videos they have images and when I've been showing props, when I'm showing my collection, stuff like that. In this case you can't really do that and that's why I would make this unique other than maybe like a program or a ticket sub. I have seen, I don't know how many total concerts I was going to count it up, maybe on another video I'll actually you know, pass that number along. But I would estimate somewhere between 700 and 1500 live shows, if you include every artist, every performing act at that show. But I have contended that, well, I've seen so many memorable, I have so many memories. I'm 44 years old. <clears throat> I started going to concerts when I was, in, in effect, probably 14 or 15. Um, well, yeah, Steve Miller Band, I was, actually, I was, I was 15. Yeah, anyway, Steve Miller Band at the Minnesota State Fair in 1992. <clears throat> anyway, the greatest, or my most, my most memorable, my most memorable, the most fulfilling or most shocking concert I ever saw was probably the Pain of Salvation performance at the inaugural, initial Prague Power USA Festival in uh, Lansing, Illinois, at... J.J. Kelly's, which was a, I wouldn't call it a dive bar, it was a bar, maybe a sports bar of sorts, it wasn't small, but it was not large, it was, I don't know what the capacity in that place was, it probably was not more than 400 people. Anyway, that was the first festival that was, you know, created and, you know, formed by Glenn Harveston, who's gone on to do something like 18 or 19 other ones. Uh, more of them. Every single other one after that one in Lansing, Illinois was held in Atlanta, Georgia, which I went to, I think, four of them as I counted. But it's, I don't know, there's a lot of reasons why it was today, the, February 24th, 2021 is the 20 year anniversary. And I've, in the past, on anniversaries of it's like the 10 year, maybe even five year, 10 year, I did post some stuff on some of the message boards. But um, why it was the most memorable or most shocking concert I ever saw. Because um, the festival there had been like 11 other bands, including Symphony X, and at the time, this was in 2001, I, I didn't say the 20 year anniversary, it was February 24th, 2001. Um, both Pain of Salvation and Symphony X, I was very new to being a fan, a fan of Dream Theater and Rush, I guess you could say, but mainly Dream Theater and the whole prog progressive metal thing. Um, I had definitely listened to a lot of the bands that were in that style, and some some of them. But Symphony X, I didn't know about. I, they were really hyped up, and I kind of liked when I first heard them, and I liked their performance actually at that show, um, the night before the headline, the night before. There were some other bands that were pretty good, um, just off the top of my head, that played Prog Power USA again at other times. Like, I guess I could pull it up. I have the list of on my um, concert attendance. Um, history which I did which it's not complete but um, it's you know I mean part of the problem with doing concert attendances for your history especially if you've seen local bands is that uh, I've seen Dean McGraw and Greg Harrigas and even Courtney Asmine probably a few dozen times I don't know how many times I can't find all the history um, yeah it was it was uh, Evergrey also was that I was introduced to and then Power of Omens is another band, and Zero Hour. So, I mean, it was hardly just Pain of Salvation at that festival, but that that, that night on the 24th, all those bands played, and, you know. Um, so I, I love Zero Hour, especially their, their second album, uh, The Towers of Avarice. And um, Evergrey, uh, Search of Truth especially, and I like some of their other albums and music. But um, it was a memorable. Symphony X, Jag Panzer, Reed and Zero, Onward, and Etheria were the other bands that played on the the 23rd, which I think was on a Friday. It was a Friday-Saturday thing, so... But, yeah, the biggest thing was they had been... They weren't even in at the weekend Pain of Salvation until, like, a few hours before their performance, which was on Saturday night at, like, 10.30 or 11 o'clock. They had been laid up in the Baltimore airport <clears throat> for I don't know how many hours and barely got any sleep the night before. And then it was sort of like... I had just bought The Perfect Element, which had been released only a few months before I got it. That was in February. The Perfect Element I probably bought in January or late December. I remember on Mike Portnoy's message board, his forum had a chat room, and some of the pe people, my friends in there, that were talked me into going to that 
festival because it wasn't going to be that far and affordable. I'd gone to Nearfest the year before and I, I did that somehow and I was able to afford it. And, um, but I still didn't really know Pain of Salvation that well. I'd just seen their name. And um, the song that really drew me in when I did buy The Perfect Element of listening to it at, uh, for the, the weeks and change leading up to that festival for what was it, like a month was her voices. But they didn't do her voices, which was weird. It was frustrating for me. However, they did like people passing by and they did a, like the first four or five tracks from The Perfect Element, which has come to be one of my fotes, my favorite all-time albums, like a lot of them, like in the top 50 or whatever. And um, it was just the energy, the raw emotion. I don't know exactly what it was. It was the unexpectedness of it. Um, and sort of just, I felt like I had just been introduced to like, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread as they'd been described as. And I've loved them ever since, although my, my passion, love for Pain and Salvation is not now or the last decade especially what it was then, I still love them. And that live performance just stood out, like, probably maybe because that weekend was like, it was a long weekend. I was there for two days, basically, or a day and a half, in this little bar. I mean, it was in February, so it wasn't, like, hot, hot, but, I mean, I think it was pretty... I also am pretty hot that at that point. I met James Bickers, the late James Bickers, from uh, Sea of Tranquility and um, uh, Progression Magazine, and I had a very pr profound discussion with him about music and about my taste in music or what I sh would be interested in just just life in general. I, I, it still saddens me that he's not around. I mean, he wasn't that much older than me, but, um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is 20 years to remembering that phenomenal show. I mean, I hate to say that I've seen, like I said, you know, hundred, like probably over a thousand performances, probably over seven or 800 concerts, um, long before I was even in a relationship. Um, and, um, I don't know. I mean, I hate to say one's better than the other, especially ones that really stand out, but I just kind of hold that. That was also very unique because it was their first performance in the U.S., and they would not play in the U.S. Like, they wouldn't tour for the longest time, so it was very special to be able to see them live. And they played probably almost two hours. And I'm not alone in this. A lot of people that went to that, were at that initial show, hold that performance in high regard. Maybe not in as high regard as I do, but they hold it in high regard in that People that have frequented Prague Power USA love Glenn, love what he's done with that festival with all the, pr the underground progressive metal and, and power metal bands. Bands from overseas, of course, especially. They, a lot of the people that, that didn't see it wish they could have been at that performance. And a lot of the people that did see it still treat it as one of, if not their favorite performance at that festival, which, you know, going on whatever they've done, 19 or 20 of them, I don't know how many exactly. Because later that year they did another one, which Superior played at, which was another big deal for me. That was in November, but um, yeah, and then, you know I saw them two more times at at Prague Power USA, which were both f very memorable, great shows. And maybe in another video I'll talk about them uh, if I can remember. But um, that that specific show, February twenty fourth, two thousand one, maybe I don't know. It was a special time because you know things were a lot different then. You know we didn't have nine eleven hadn't happened. You know, my I was a lot younger, obviously, 20 years ago, you know, 24 years old. And uh, I was just a young adult sort of, sort of trying to figure out what he wanted to do with his life and what he wanted to do with his passions. I'd just been on the, I'd been doing radio for a little less than a year or a little more than a year, which didn't ultimately go where I hoped it would, but I still have been on KFAI radio. So that was, I interviewed James for that, that uh, I did an interview and aired it on KFAI radio later like the next week or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, and I met a lot of people there, but I don't know, be, probably because Prague Par USA, even though it was still underground, became a larger thing and became obviously a lot more expensive. And, um, but that specific one was just very affordable, very intimate. It was kind of like my thing. Like I got to really experience something very unique that um, maybe not the fact that other people didn't get to experience it, but it kind of just, I, it's like when I met Prince, you know, that was unique. It was just Prince and I, even though I met him, only, only talked to him for all of three minutes. Um, the, that's, that concert felt very unique and like a one of a kind. Like it only happened then. The, the, the condition that the band were in and they were on pure adrenaline, 
um, even though I didn't get to talk to them, and I've really never had much time to actually talk to Daniel Gilmill personally, but um, at the other festivals that I saw them at, but um, no, that just it, they played they, the music, the performances were great too. But it was more of just sort of, and I didn't realize it at the time. I was a little bit because I was like, "When well, they can play her, her voices, when they can play her voices," and I didn't do it. But I kind of just left that, like, "What the hell?" <laughs> and it just kind of resonated with me for weeks, months, and then years after. Maybe part of it is because I just felt like I'll never experience that again. I don't want to experience that again because I want it to be unique. So, um, when, and, you know, when we're missing live concerts right now. I can, I'll never be able to forget that. If I die tomorrow. I'll always hold that concert as one of the greatest things I ever experienced. You know, maybe up there with my wedding and some other things like that, you know. So, um, but um, please give me a com comments about your favorite concert. If you've gone to Prague Power USA uh, or you want to or Pain of Sal you've seen Pain of Salvation live, what's your greatest concert if you can pinpoint it down to one and why? Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I got one or two more videos I want to make, and maybe I can start to go through my concert lists and start to talk about more of them as just reviews. I don't need to dig through my uh, disorganized uh, collection of music upstairs, which we haven't been able to set up in our house here. But um, uh, when I have time like this, when I have PTO and I'm alone. So, um, but uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.